Okay, so if you can't tell already, there is a big gap between this video and the last video I uploaded, like months apart. And it's because for months I couldn't figure out what to put up on YouTube and I was kind of going through a weird funk. And so through the holidays, I was allowing myself to eat things that I don't normally like to eat. And I was kind of feeling still, I was kind of feeling like unfulfilled. And then um, a couple weeks ago, I was talking to a sister friend whom I love. And she started the carnivore diet because of talking to her and everything. And she was getting really good results. And I kind of told her, just some stuff I was going through and she asked me if I was eating enough fats and I realized a couple days later that I wasn't. So I started implementing more fats in my diet and like the very day that I did, like I didn't realize that I wasn't. Um, but the day that I, start, I ate a ton of fats, I felt so full but I felt my body... Um, having like that euphoric sensation go through it. And so then weeks later, I felt like I was kind of putting on weight and I was struggling so, not like a lot of weight because I have plateaued for months. Um, but I just felt like a little bit more inflammation than normal, I guess. I was starting to struggle with doing the carnivore and I was not liking it and I was like really not enjoying my life and I kept craving sugar all the time. I was eating more fruit than I would normally eat and I was kind of letting myself eat rice once in a while more because I don't mind eating it like once a month but I was allowing myself to kind of like stare away from what I was trying to do. I finally was so fed up with it because I was like you know if carnivore doesn't work for me i literally feel like hopeless and I don't know what to do but like when I first started I felt so good and I loved it and I was so sold on it and now here I am in February 2022 and I am struggling and I don't enjoy it and I'm sick of it and I just like it feels so chaotic and I just feel like I'm not enjoying my life and so I had to sit down with myself and ask myself what was going on that that is what this whole video is about. I finally feel like I know what I what I can say to to hopefully help people because I was able to help myself. My body told me when in this meditation what I was experiencing was that last summer in 2021, I started researching a lot about like um too much fat and lean protein and protein sparing modified fasting. And I started letting it worry me that I was having, that I was eating too many calories or eating too much fat or whatever. And pretty much since then I have plateaued and I started eating a lot of lean meats and I started craving a lot of sugar over time. So last summer is when it really started. And then as you know, you have months and I wasn't losing any weight. And I still ate fats. I just don't, I know I wasn't eating enough because I didn't feel satiated and I was hungry all the time. I couldn't even not eat. I couldn't stop eating. I felt hungry and, and, it, and then also like emotional hunger and stuff. And so in this meditation, my body was telling me that when I started worrying about food, everything changed. And this part is very important because food is was my comfort because of a lot, um, my own emotional trauma and wounds from when I was a kid. When I implemented worry and then I implemented food in the same emotion and dialogue in myself, now there's a lack. Now I am in fight or flight. And also, my body told me that I need to eat as much as I need to eat. And I was eating a ton of protein, 
And then I was eating a lot of fats just recently when I started eating it. And I was getting ashamed of myself, like feeling like I don't know what the hell I'm doing because I don't. And then I was thinking, why, what, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? And I realized that I was looking too much outside of myself, at other people's stories. I was listening to so much information about everything and I stopped listening to my body. I was looking at all the people who fast and who eat pro, like high protein or high fats or um, have some carbs in there and then listening to all of just like everything. And it literally started creating chaos in my own life because I didn't know what, what I needed to do. And my body told me that when I started worrying, that's when shit started not being good. I wasn't enjoying it. And I started being extremely rigid with myself. Like, you gotta stop eating. You need to fast. You need to do this. You need to do this. And essentially, for hopefully for those who understand or don't understand, how we parent ourselves the way we were parented. And food was my comfort. When I'm taking away the thing that for one, like I had to realize again, that I was in a state of rehabilitation. And then I also realized that I needed to stop comparing myself to people. And there's these cool, beautiful women doing carnivore that can like go fast for a day or a couple days and then just eat beef and water. And I was trying to do that because I had higher expectations for myself. And I ha it literally made me have to sit down with myself and be honest with where I was. Maybe someday I could be like that, but right now I'm not like that. And this carnivore way of eating, it's not a diet to me. I am literally trying to heal so many aspects of myself. And this carnivore diet has like leached or leaked into the aspects of myself that I need to heal. And that's why I love it so much because it has given me a sense of self-control that I never had. It has given me food freedom and also telling myself, you can eat, go ahead and eat as much as you want of this meat, you know, therefore there's no restriction. And when I was restricting myself, it was bringing up a lot of trauma from my childhood and, and so I started reliving the fear and the irritation and, and uh, the lack of love, which I used food to try to comfort the lack of love most of my life. So I was like, okay, I need to, I have to reparent myself. And so I'm going to let my body eat as much as it wants. And I was trying to pull dairy out of my life. And I know there's like all these health reasons why you should and some people can handle it and some people can't. But I never hear people talk about it on an emotional and mental level. And like it is addicting and I know that. But I feel like, and maybe this is stupid, but I don't care because it's real. I can't just completely take everything away from myself because I'm still in over 20 years of being in hell and over 20 years of dealing with depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts and feeling completely worthless and purposeless and pointless to life. And now I am in rehab for myself. And so I can't completely just like take everything out. I took out so much that I had to realize that it was okay if I let myself eat dairy. And if I ate too much, I know the consequences of it. And so I can find this balance of respect for myself and also have grace with myself because when you are sick like that um, for almost 30 years, you know, because I really think it was really just started when I was conceived because of my family situation and all the emotion and the fear and the anxiety and depression that went on in my parents and that was bred into me and then my culture, my environment affecting it. 
So really, it was over almost 30 years of a very high stress and very hurtful life. And then I think that I'm going to heal that in one year, you know. And since every part of us plays a part in the whole of us, so, you know, the emotional, the mental, and the physical, this isn't just about weight loss. And that's what I was doing. I was getting mad at myself. And I realized, like, when I started getting mad at myself and having these high expectations and demands of myself to be perfect, and since I'm plateauing, now I'm worthless, and that's what I was doing to myself. And so I was then losing trust in myself that I could do this. And then internally being angry and shameful of myself that other people could do things or losing weight quicker or they're getting pregnant or whatever it is. And I plateaued and I'm still here. This is me reparenting myself the way I was reparented or parented. Now I'm shaming myself and I'm again telling myself that how far I have come isn't good enough and that everything I've done isn't good enough and that I'm not good enough for, you know, uh, for accepting my own self. I'm not good enough to accept my own self because I'm not hitting the marks of my standards that I had for myself. And this is what my body was telling me. And And I've had this happen many times. I just, I spent 20 years abusing myself mentally and emotionally that that is the habit of what I did to myself. And so here I am now having to redo this. And so of course I would forget because loving myself and reparenting and and having grace and compassion and being so very gentle with myself, you know, and I had to look at that day. I was like, yeah, why am I mad at myself for plateauing? I've already lost 50 pounds, you know, and I've gained a lot of muscle because I work out and I, and I look better to myself. Like, and I am talking about a, a hardcore addiction that it was so associated with so much of the trauma of my life. That is impressive. And these stories are what are beautiful. And when I hear other people talk about how they're overcoming their addictive, their addictions or codependent relationships on their substances or whatever it is that they choose to help soothe their trauma and their stress, even if they're not at like their goal weight or even if they're not at the peak of where they're trying to achieve, it's so beautiful. And it makes me always want to cry because it just helps me believe more in us all, you know? And so I had to look at that and be like, you have done very well. You know, it's been a year and a half and I still have like 50 pounds I could lose, but look how far I have come. And, and I just, you know, I had to just calm down and tell myself and give myself permission that it's okay if my progress is slower than other people's. And it's okay if I can't fast because it triggers so much hurt and trauma. And it's okay if I can't give up dairy and just go on beef and water like other cool people can. And that it's okay because I have to take one step at a time. I have to make myself uncomfortable. We don't grow in our comfort zones. But I cannot be so rigid and harsh with myself and demand perfection to the point that my own self is, doesn't want to listen to me and it doesn't trust me because that's what was going on. And so really, I hope that whoever listens to this, like some people, they don't talk about their trauma or if they even have any. And, you know, a lot of people had just a lot of health issues they were working through, which is mostly what people talk about on carnivore is just the health issues physically and like maybe like the depression and anxiety, but I never hear anybody talk about what even got them to that state of dis-ease. Whatever got them to be so overweight, whatever got them to be depressed and to be this, because it isn't just the food we're eating that put us all sick. It's also our internal state of being. You know, where are, how healthy are we mentally and emotionally? Do we love ourselves? And knowing that we all parent ourselves the way we were parented, you know, like that is what I also want to bring to this is that there's so many, there's so much to this. Uh, It's not just, um, 
it all has everything to do with it, but it's not just losing weight or fixing whatever element physically you're dealing with. It also has everything to do with becoming whole within ourselves, um, especially when, you know, food or drugs or whatever you used was your go-to to help you essentially keep living. Um, and that's really what, you know, like to some level, it all the abuse that we done as far as like, you know, like substance abuse, abuse and food on some level, it was because we loved ourselves enough that we were fighting for our lives. And if this is what helped us stay here, you know, but now it became so self-destructive that it's having the reverse effect a long time ago. And so, so there is, you know, that state that you see, I did love myself and the food helped me stay here and not kill myself. You know, like that comfort that I got for just a minute helped me deal, keep going, just surviving. And it's just, it's, it's not enough to survive anymore. It doesn't, nobody wants to live in survival mode. A lot of doctors that aren't, aren't carnivore, but a lot of doctors that are loving and doing good for the world are explaining, obviously, how how living in stress and in survival and what it does to our immune systems and what it does to everything and kind of practically we start our our bodies start attacking itself and um i just hope that whoever listens to this uh, if you are struggling because if you feel like you aren't doing enough or you, you these people are doing way better and they're getting results or you just whatever is seriously like have grace for yourself and relax and calm yourself down because it is just that rigid like you got to be perfect type of shit and it's so not real it we are all on our own journey and there's no race to win because the winning is within us so glad that I was able to remember this and even in as much as I am now because it's so important and just like if there was a hospital of children, a loving environment for children to come heal themselves, most likely the practitioners and the people there working would be very loving and graceful to those children and be very compassionate to them. Um, when If they were to come out of abusive homes and if they're coming off of drugs because of their parents or whatever, you know, like if you were to go to that home, you would be loving to those children and you would give them and you would and you would support them and you would encourage them and you wouldn't push them because you know you have a good heart and so essentially that is what we have to do for ourselves and then when you get stronger in that aspect then you push it a little bit farther to grow because obviously you can't grow when you are in a comfort zone ultimately i believe and i have found for myself that what this is is that essentially i am gaining trust with myself and when I am rude and judgmental and harsh to myself I want to I'm like that small little child that wants to go just be like fuck you I'm not gonna listen to you but when I'm very kind and loving passionate and I don't judge myself or shame myself for whatever then my body starts responding and this whole week has been responding so much better I allowed myself to eat whatever I wanted and I have been eating less because it was love essentially, that I was looking for. The fulfillment that I was looking for is the love for myself and that trust that I got myself. And so when I stopped being rigid and I started being like, nope, we're going to go at our own pace and I'm going to listen to my body and stop listening to everybody else, my body has been responding so much better in just one week. So hopefully that helps somebody. Um, if you know anybody that would, this would help, please share. Please subscribe. I am trying to be authentic with myself with this YouTube channel and only put up stuff that I feel when I feel like I need to. I'm not in a race to do anything. All I want to do is share my journey and then hopefully it helps people remember or helps them be encouraged or whatever it is. So, um, and I guess subscribe. <laughs> I don't know.